have a surprise for you guys. This is your next semester project. We've had this motorcycle donated to us for your use for the 2012 event and there's a lot of work to be done. We also have had the opportunity to talk about it and we feel that uh, Stephanie will probably be the crew chief on our team. Tanner will be lucky to be here. He'll be like Goose and Top Gun, just lucky <laughs> to be there. And uh, we chose Jesse to ride it because of his extensive motocross experience. And there's, it'll be a really challenging and rigorous test. Yes. <laughs> Goose didn't look through the whole movie. I know that. <laughs> That's why I said that. But you'll live through the whole movie. Or else I'm sure I'd get a really bad note from your parents. So, anyways. So what do you guys think of this thing? I think it's great. I mean, it's going to need some work, but I'm excited. It's going to need a tremendous amount of work. And I would, you have no idea what you're signing up for. No. It's a tremendous amount of work. The technocracy inside this engine would rival that of a new motorcycle in some areas, in a lot of areas actually. And uh, to compete in something like that, we don't just want to be an also ramp. I'd like to see you guys be ultra competitive. And there's a chance that, like, you know, before the end of the semester, you guys would think that I'm a tyrant because I'll push you very hard to do this at a very high level. It's a pretty serious competition. First place is around the $30,000 mark for a Jeff Decker bronze trophy, which would look pretty good in our showcase out in the hall, a la class of 2012. Why don't you guys come up here and take a look at this thing, see what you're up against. So this bike was found in a storage locker slash barn, I guess, in Texas. and. Um, it's been donated for your use for the 10 event. She's not seized up. <laughs> what, That's good. Oh, kind of. So we're going to have to get a list of parts and then go through it and see what's not there and what is? That's right, yeah. You're going to have to make it look like it's worthy of being in the Guggenheim <laughs> after the ride. Wow. Have it look that nice. Start making a list of um, some of the real obvious things that we're going to need and then some of the stuff is just going to be made out of um, a particular alloy called unobtainium and we'll just have to replicate and make those parts. This is not like going down to the local Honda store and saying, dude, I need some piston rings. You'd be on the phone with uh, companies specking the rings that you need. And we're doing, we're doing this blind, right? There is no manual. There's a parts manual. Effectively, there's no real service manuals. Back in the day, they would have these things called service shots, where the dealers would send out these um, these little like telegrams, if you will, to the individual um, dealers. And don't take this the wrong way, but people were a lot smarter back then. There was no <laughs> internet surfing or anything like that. No, so there was a lot more mechanical technocracy and a lot more capable people back then for basic maintenance and things like oh, that. Oh, so like service bulletins? Or? Yeah, they would send out like TSBs, gotcha. so technical service bulletins. But for a cross country run, you really want the best parts you can get. For sure. Best parts are the ones that you make yourself? Some of them are the ones we make ourselves or we'll have some really high quality vendors make them for us. We'll do as much of this in-house as we can. And then the parts that we do have to source out there's some really cool uh, mechanical engineering graduates that are local, work in local industry, and they'll help us. They really will. So this boils down to ultimately uh, a question or not whether it's actually valid whether you can get this done or not. Tanner's a workhorse and he puts in the time, but I know he's got a lot of extracurricular work that he does. He's a logger. He does that. Steph, you got a lot of hands-on skills to learn coming from the art background at Potsdam. And this guy here, he's idling. He hasn't given me his very best yet, he knows it. I seriously question whether 
I don't like entering in these projects. The world's littered with unfinished projects. And I seriously question whether you guys could get it done or not. And I mean, this is not easy. This isn't like, it's really hard and it's not easy. And there are some of the finest restoration shops in the country that would think twice about before taking this job on with this time frame and this constraint. And to put your name out there and the university's name, I mean, like, people are going to seriously go, well, as soon as you can. Can they really get that done? And there'd be a lot of people that would probably sneer and say, well, those kids gave it a shot, but, like, they weren't qualified. You guys take this for what it's worth. I mean, here's the bike. There's the Pacific. And you guys have checked out the site, the Cannonball site. It's all right there, you know. Have at it if you think you can do it for what it's worth. Hair's going up. I'm excited. Yeah. He, he doesn't think we can do it. That's that's more yeah, for that's, me right that's, there. That's enough right People there. People telling me I can't freaking do it or stuff like that. Dang it, it Mr. We can't do it. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love good. I love proving people wrong.